Hi, everybody. Hey, uh, thanks for joining today's broadcast. Um, I'm going to uh, pause for just a moment here. I want to make sure I can get Miranda on and um, we'll go ahead and get started and say hi to everybody. So give me just a little minute to get that situated. I'm going to just go over to Facebook and see if I can see Miranda. Okay, I'm not seeing actually um, Miranda join us yet. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and get us started. So I really I want to thank everybody for joining. I see there's just tons of people um, on the live chat. So I'm going to do the best I can and uh, get us going here. And I want to welcome you all to today's Dot Along. In today's project, we're going to be doing this gold elegance tree that you've all seen as we posted on Facebook. And I just love the way this turned out. So this is really simple. There's only um, four, four colors in this, um, in this project. And I think it, you can see it has a nice shine and glow to it. So I'm really excited for us to be able to dot this project. And then I wanted to show you, <clears throat> I had done one, uh, I was just kind of practicing. So it's not uh, complete, but I did it with silver and some crystal uh, glitter paint. And I just love the way that one turned out too on some black cardstock. So I think um, I think that really turned out great. So um, I'm really looking forward to this project. So the things that we're going to need today are our regular dotting tools. And um, I, of course, use the crystal light crochet hooks. And I'll say what uh, which one I'm on as we go through it and then also a set of nail dotters. <clears throat> the other thing that we're gonna need is some kind of Christmas tree outline. So uh, Miranda and I, since this was a collaboration, we actually used the same shape. You'll recognize this is exactly the same shape that she used. Um, we just interpreted the design differently. So um, I'm really um, looking forward to how that's gonna work out for us. So that's what we are gonna need. And then also we're going to need a surface to paint on now I'm just using a heavier weight cardstock, um, and I like to use the cardstock just because of the, the colors. But I will tell you, it's a little bit. Um, you have to be a little bit more careful because once you get paint on it, it's really hard to get off. Um, and so I'm trying to um, try out some different sprays and things to kind of seal and coat the paper. But I haven't been able to um, hit on exactly what I think might work so far. So we're going to use cardstock. This is eight by ten. You can use a canvas. <coughs> excuse me, can you or use any kind of surface that you have? And I'm going to use some tracing paper. I'm using the Serral uh, tracing paper. I really like this. It comes in different colors. Um, I just got a, like a little starter pack and this had like five different colors in it. So I'm just uh, got one of those and a ruler. And I think that's basically all of the tools and things that we're going to need. 
So before I go too much further, I'm going to go ahead and um, stop there and um, see who's on the chat. So let's see, who do we have on? I'm here. Oh, Miranda, I didn't see you drop in. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. thank God. You were just letting me ramble on like I had no sense. <laughs> I was just waiting for an opportunity. I didn't want to switch cameras on you. Oh, okay. Hey, I'm so I'm so glad that you joined, and I'm so sorry I didn't notice that you came in because I didn't see your little I didn't see your little picture down there. Is it working so, now? Yeah, yeah, okay. I see it now. Now that we're talking to each other, yeah, I see it. So, okay. hey, thanks for joining. We have. Um, I guess you can you see everybody that's on the chat. I cannot because if I open it, I can hear the dueling voices. Oh, okay. All right. So we've got just tons and tons of people on the on the chat right now. So let's just see. We've got um, Margaret, Darius on, um, Pam, Jill, Julie, Mary. So we've just got tons and tons of people on. So I don't want to go through the list. It's a pretty long list. But everybody's <laughs> saying hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so excited. Yeah. So they're thrilled. And then, um, so Miranda, um, you, then you heard me telling everybody that you and I used the same, we used the same tree outline. Yep. 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 For both of our designs. Yeah. So it was a really nice collaboration. Okay. So anything you want to say, Miranda, before we get started? Nope. Feel free to go ahead. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and switch this down to the table and we will go ahead and get started. <clears throat> I think I'm, I wonder which camera I'm actually using. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys see me okay? I guess I'm, I'm using a different camera than I normally use. I'm sort of discombobulated, I guess. Yeah, your angle is from lower now. I can see you and your, your um, stock behind you. Yeah. So let me see if I go down to the, no. Um, I'm having a little technical difficulty, so I don't know which camera I'm actually using now. Oh, I'm using my webcam. Oh, that's a, that's not good. I'm going to have to um, see if I can get that straightened up because I don't really actually want to use my webcam because <clears throat> I won't be able to, um, to share with you. While you're doing that, I'm going to try to call up the chat and see okay. if I can mute it. Yeah, I can hear the I can hear some background noise. <coughs> there we go. I just muted it, so I think I can look at the chat and help out while we're doing this. Okay, I got to figure out how to switch my camera. I'm from Ohio. I'm in Ohio too. C Burns. Aaron Ridley, I know you. Jeannie, oh, awesome. I'm so glad you guys could all make it on here. We're just working out the camera situation right now so we can watch Maria's lovely painting skills here. Oh, mine is a glare again, she's telling me. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Let's see if I disable it, if that is going to work. Okay, so Miranda, you can't see me right now. Right, no, I can just see your header. Okay. All right, keep talking, everybody, Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Born in Columbus. Woo! I'm actually, I was born in New England, but my husband's here in Ohio, so we moved out this way. Um, so I'm not sure how to get Christine's my camera. Telling back. Me I have a glare again, so I'm going to um, see if I can adjust mine to hear the lighting, maybe. Maybe I'm just shiny. <laughs> Jill, when I'm talking, 
Maria won't be on, so the camera that you're seeing is mine. It switches cameras. Okay, I can't get it on. <clears throat> <laughs> Let me see. If I My shining star. Yeah, I'm just shining. Just way too shiny. I don't know. I thought I had too many lights on, and now that I shut more off, it doesn't seem right. to I can't, help. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it on. Oh, there I go. Ooh, California, Aaron. My husband and I actually <laughs> met in Monterey. <laughs> Now I can't get the light to turn back on. All right, guys, you're just going to have to bear with our technical difficulties here. <laughs> see, this is all the stuff we get to edit out when we don't do live. You know, now you're getting to see all the bloopers. Oh, my kid is here, too. His name's Paris. I had to move the hedgehog into the other room, though. She was too noisy. She's always grinding her teeth on the water bottle. All right, there we let go. me see if I can. Maybe I can't that's too bright. I muted myself. Monterey is it's gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. No, it won't work. Florida. Florida. I bet I it's, it's warmer there. there. I don't know how to get it. Yes, we have a hedgehog, but only my daughters can hold it. For some reason, it always puts its it spikes the up with working. me. I don't get to pet it very well. It probably can tell that I'm nervous about getting stuck. The active camera. <laughs> what settings? The ones that no, click there. Uh, here? On the camera, click here. And that those settings, wherever those are. Because um, <clears throat> Maria is working on her cameras, probably. It's multiple microphones. When I talk, see it switches to me on the camera. You'll see my canvas. They see nope. it to me. I can't use the selected camera. But then when I stop talking, it's actually going to Maria's because if they're making noise over there, it'll switch to her camera for her. I don't think I can move my webcam so that they can see me. Eight inches of snow. Holy cow. We're supposed to get that tonight. At first they said 18 inches, but Christine, you got it before us. Oh, Mary, I didn't know you were in Idaho. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, I do talk to text so often that I find myself now saying punctuation when I'm just talking normal. Do you guys do that? It's kind of embarrassing to admit, but the other day I was saying something to my daughter and I was like, Can you get out of here, exclamation point. And she just looked at me like, what are you saying? And I have the urge to do it now because I'm talking to you guys in the chat. I want to be like, question mark, exclamation point. I don't think I can get going. Hey, Miranda. Yeah. Um, can you guys see my desk yet? No, it's still on your logo. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Well, this is really unfortunate, you guys. I'm really sorry about that. I am not sure I am going to be able to get my camera working well. Oh, no. That's bad. Um. You can't angle your webcam down for it either. Well, I'll try I'll try that and see if it will work. Um give me a couple more minutes here. Let me sure. see. Absolutely. <clears throat> I know I got on like an hour before because my husband got me a new camera. Uh-huh. And a new microphone. <laughs> and I said, I don't know what I'm doing with these. You have to help me with the setup. So he was trying to help me get it all organized. Yeah. Yeah, I usually can work this um, fairly easily, but for some reason today, 
I, um, you know, I want to struggle with this for whatever reason. Now I got to get my, try to get my webcam back. What says you over there, it's take. I know. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing there. 57. Hot tub and drinking hot chocolate. Jill, you're making me jealous. Yeah, I remember Massachusetts. That's where I grew up. Mary Cusack. Maria, they're suggesting you just do what you did last time. <laughs> what did I do last time? I don't know, with whatever with your cameras. Just do what you did last time, Maria. That's my advice, she said. I, I don't know what it was I did oh, last time, but I, I think, can see. I, I think can... I have a camera now. <laughs> yep, I can see your desk now. Oh, my gosh. This is like Thank a you. nightmare. Oh, my heavens. <laughs> now, I will tell you, I heard the little conversation. Um, I spent a lot of time on the East Coast in Massachusetts. Oh, wow. My, my grandparents uh, are from Massachusetts. And Haverhill. I don't know if you know where that is. Yes, I do. And uh, so I spent a lot of time in Haverhill. So you're familiar with the accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I can remember, I'll tell you guys a story when I, I, I grew up in a military family and in a military family, you are constantly getting immunizations and shots for your overseas tours and things like that. And uh, we were staying with um, my grandma and she said, it's time to get your shots. <laughs> and we thought she was saying shots, but she was saying shorts. Shorts, yeah. And everybody everybody kind of freaked out because they were like, no, shots, no, we can't, we don't want shots. <laughs> okay, guys, I think I can get myself uh, uh, a little bit um, not quite so discombobulated. Okay, so I wanna show you how to set up this design and Miranda's already got hers printed or um, sketched out, but just for, those of you that are trying to set up, let's kind of get this going here. So what I found was easiest for me, this is an eight by 10, was to go ahead and mark my center point. So I'm just gonna make some marks for my center. <clears throat> and I'm using a chalk pencil, of course. And I'll just connect those. And that way I can get my tree oriented a little bit better. Oh, Maria, they're saying you're echoing. I don't hear it on, on the YouTube on mine, but they're saying you're echoing. Lots I of can, echo. I can hear the echo too a little bit, but I don't know where it's coming from because I don't have anything else on. Um, let me see. I couldn't find my tiara. Christine's asking where our tiaras are. <laughs> I was gonna wear reindeer antlers, but you know, or bunny ears. That was all I could find in the kids' stuff today. Can you guys, am I still echoing? Daria says it sounds fine. Jessica says it sounds fine. No echo okay. here. No, nope, okay. okay, they're saying fine now. Okay, good. <clears throat> All right, so this is the basic tree itself is seven inches. And then uh, I can still hear it, you guys, but I'll just kind of keep pressing on. And then from the original design, there's a topper. So it's actually about eight and a half inches, I think all told with the topper, something like that. And so um, you wanna be sure that when you're putting it on your, yeah, this is just a little over, it's like eight and three quarters. You want to just kind of keep that in mind when you're placing your your piece on here so that you give yourself enough of a border in case you want to frame it um, or anything like that. So I am going to put it about right here and then I'm going to put my tracing paper under it, of course. And then I'll just be able to trace around it, use a stylus or whatever. Um, to trace around it. I really like this, this, um, this Sarel tracing, it's S-A-R-A-L. It's a nice um, tracing paper because it comes off fairly easily. So 
So it's like two sided and then you just kind of imprint it on. Is that what you're doing? It's um, it's got a coating a, like a I, I don't know that it's actually graphite, but it's a coating on one side of the paper. And um, so as I trace around it, it'll actually print kind of take my tracing marks. OK. On the canvas or whatever. <clears throat> So that way I don't have to use a pencil. This stuff comes off with, um, since I'm doing it on cardstock with an eraser. And so um, it's pretty forgiving in terms of being able to remove it at the end. That's awesome. I've never seen that kind of paper before. Yeah, quilters use it a lot. <clears throat> That's how I came to know it. Okay, so I've got the basic outline. And then the other component of this is to make these branches. And you can see that what I'm doing is I've just got a little sort of a swoop here in several points on this tree. And this is going to form our branches. And so you can just draw that kind of shape on your tree, whatever, if you're using like more of a triangle shape or whatever, you're just kind of moving it from one edge in a little bit of a curve down towards the center. And that's going to form our branches. And if you don't have the pattern like on mine, I just sketched kind of a vague idea from the edges down to the center point. If you just use your center line here, I just went from the branches and made a V to the center of each. Let me see yeah, that's, that's perfect. I'm still shiny here. I can see it on mine. I'll try to darken it a little here. All right, and I'm just going to make sure I've got all my lines down. Okay. <clears throat> can you see how nicely that transferred? I think that's really nice. That's really easy. <clears throat> so I didn't ask you to get my pattern, right? <clears throat> you were running upstairs to get my pattern. Okay. <clears throat> hey, you guys, I'm going to step away for just a moment because I kind of want to follow for those people that got the pattern. So I'm going to step away for just one second. I left it, um, I left it upstairs. So I'm going to go run and get that real quick and I'll be right back. Miranda, you want to keep everybody entertained? Oh, I'm sure I can handle that. I'm, I'm pretty entertaining. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Oh, they're asking what kind of card stock. But we can, we can ask her when she comes back because I missed that as well. Let me see if I can look it up on the pattern here. Nope, it's not letting me get out of here. I think Amazon, yep, Amazon. You guys already are on the ball, Daria. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Who's going to dance and sing? Oh, no, I hope you guys don't mean me. Gale, seven inches of snow. That better not be what's headed our way. I just looked out the window and I see huge snowflakes coming down. Okay, I'm back and I'm sorry. I heard you asking me a question. No, you're fine. They were asking what kind of cardstock. And then so, they also and asked uh, where to get the Serral paper, but it looks like people are already answering. They found it at Hobby Lobby and on Amazon. Yep. Like Joann's yeah. also has it. Okay. Usually if you look in the, um, the like the quilting section, um, you'll find some transfer papers. That makes sense. Okay, so we've got, um, <clears throat> we've got our design down and I'm using the Extreme Sheen paint. And this paint, I noticed, I think I was telling you guys last time is a little bit sticky. I don't know if you've used it, Miranda. 
I haven't. Well, actually, I take that back. I use the silver, but it is it's a little tacky. Mm -hmm. um, so I had trouble with it making the strings and I, I ended up um, going without it that day. <laughs> yeah. But look at how pretty that paint is. It is. It's gorgeous when it dries. Oh, my gosh. Oh, amazing. I totally love that paint. It's got so much shine, but it is a little bit sticky. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and because I'm using um, these particular tools, I'm going to tell you the tools that I'm using as we go along. So I'm starting off with the K10.5, 6.5 millimeter. And the way we want to get our dots down, how many people are painting with us today? Or people just watch it. See how stringy that is? We have 67 watching slash looks like uh, nobody's answering yet about who's painting. But Okay. So this paint is so stringy that you're just going to have to be a little bit careful that as you, y'all can see that I'm sure, as you pull it up that you let that string break. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come right out to the tip of these little branches and right at the edge of our either V or whatever shape we made there. And we're just going to get our first dot down. I'm going sort of towards the outside. And when you pull it up off the paper or the surface, you need to make sure that you're um, letting it snap. And I'm going to turn my uh, around. It's a little bit easier for me. I don't know how you guys all like to orient your, your page, but I have to turn mine quite a lot throughout the painting process just to make sure that, number one, my hands aren't in the paint. And I get a kind of a good angle. So you'll see me turn it. I'm not always going to work in like a standard orientation. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yes. I have to do the same with stones. Not so much if I'm using a canvas, but I think I've just gotten used to it because it always hits my camera if I try to turn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I always have to um, kind of move mine around a lot. And now I'm gonna go to the I9, 5.5 millimeter, and I'm gonna get a couple of dots. Basically, all we're doing is making graduated dots. So really, you could use whatever tools you needed to use or you have and just kind of follow along to make the graduated dots down to the center of your tree. Miranda, what did you end up doing with tool about tools? I'm just using the small nail dotting styluses. Okay. That's good. That will be good for for people to see. That's what I was hoping because I feel like it's a it's a set that a lot of people have. Yep. All right. So I've got um, my K10.5, 6.5 millimeter, and then I went down to my I9. Uh, 5.5 millimeter. And now I'm going to go to my largest nail dotter. And I'm going to follow the rest of that curve down to the center. I'm having to exaggerate pulling it off a little bit just because it, the paint is so sticky. I just switched over to mine. My color looks really, really over exaggerated on this camera, but I think it's just because I'm coming through the hangouts instead. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I'm just going to go down the center just a couple, walk the, a few dots down the center there. And that's our first branch. And it's basically that all the way down for each of the branches, except we're going to, you'll see in just a moment here, we're going to stagger the... Um, we're going to stagger the dots in and out just a little bit. Did you just connect the center to the next branch down? Is that what that was, the couple dots down? Yeah, I just am kind of, so what I'm going to go for is sort of a line down the center. And of course, you don't have to do that, but I'm going to kind of follow a little bit of a line to make just like how the branches might connect to the trunk. Okay, sounds good. And then I'm using back to the 10.5, the, the K10.5, 6.5 millimeter. And I'm going to put 
another dot on the next branch and you can see got a little something there i'm going to go in just a little bit And then I'm back to my i9 5.5 and I'll just put another couple of dots. You see how easy this is. This pattern's really simple, um, but I think it gives just a really nice effect. I think actually with the dotting tools, because it's such a smaller tool, I'm going to have to double up on branches to fill mm -hmm. in, in between. Yeah, but that's, that's I think, I think part of what I hope to let people know is that you can adapt, right? You can, exactly. <laughs> right, you can change, you know, don't have to have the same tools. You can kind of work with what you have or what you prefer to work with. All right, and on this branch, we're gonna do something just a little bit different. And we're going to put, I'm going to use my, um, actually, I'm gonna do a little smaller one. I'm gonna use back to my green one, the, the K 10.5. Depends on your sizing, you know, how your spacing is. And I'm gonna put a larger dot right there and we're going to kind of alternate that pattern now i'm going to go back outside to my <clears throat> next branch i'm still using this 10.5 how's everybody doing are you guys following along okay it looks like they're doing pretty good good Somebody's asking if you're going for peaks or flat dots somebody well said... go ahead yeah i I just, um, I'm not going for anything in particular. I'm going to top dot this at the end. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to take the time to flatten them all out. There's a little bit of a peak. There's a little, but like not a peak, but a button on, um, on the center of these, but that's okay. So I'm not going to flatten them out. <clears throat> We have a lot of people saying they're observing and they're going to paint tomorrow when it's light. Watching now, painting later. Um, they're talking about where to get the paint from. Yeah. So I found that um, I found some at Michael's, but you know, Michael seemed to have been not care not having a lot, you know. So I think Hobby Lobby might have been the place that I found it most easily. Otherwise, I have to order stuff online or whatever. But I can generally find things in the craft stores, but I have those three main ones by me. So I'm using the i9 5.5. And I'm just going to put my next dots down. Pam says she's doing hers in silver. Yeah. Um, I showed you that silver one at the beginning. That is so pretty. Miranda, can we see yours? I, um, I'm going to switch over to you so we can look at yours. <laughs> yeah, I think when I'm talking, it is switching, but I'm having to fill in extra like I was <clears throat> saying because I'm just using the nail dotting styluses, Yeah, which are smaller. So I'm just yeah. kind of doing an extra branch in between the patterned ones. Uh-huh. But mine is really the color is a little off tonight, but this is the gold. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's that's going to be pretty though and I like I think the variation is is kind of interesting. I like it. All right, so I'm moving down to the H8 5 mm. And again, there's no real um set definer. If you purchase the pattern, I only gave you the 
uh, size for the outside, you know, for the very first part of the branch, because, um, you know, depending on your sizing and your dotting, you're going to have less dots than I do in different sizes. So I thought that um, that would be good enough. And then you could just kind of graduate. And now I'm going to go back to the nail dotter. Maria, I think, are you still on my camera? You might want to switch back to yours. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Okay. Maria, they're asking if you can zoom in some more, but I'm not sure on that camera if you're able to. Yeah, I don't know if I can. Let me try. Let me get this down. Okay, let me see if I can zoom in anymore. Actually, I might can just move the arm a little bit here. That a little bit better. I think, and you're gonna have to turn it, push it off to the side just a little bit because it's off screen. Yep, there you go. Perfect. Okay. Beverly's asking if you're using the crochet hook. She might have missed what how the start was. Pardon me? Beverly is asking if you're using the crochet hooks. Yeah, these are the crystal light crochet hooks. Yeah, I tend to use these tools quite a lot. They're easy to clean. Um, they're a nice flat bottom. But I am experimenting with some different tools. So... Um, you know, you may see me change that up just a little bit. All right, here's the i9 5.5. Somebody just sent me a set of those flat tools, and I, I am not adept at working with them. I don't know if it's because I don't get enough paint on the bottom, but they're flat like the crochet hooks, but I, I have no clue how to use them. So I definitely need some more practice before I go. <laughs> trying those live which one are they just acrylic are they like acrylic rods yes exactly yeah but they don't yeah. come off like it comes off at an angle or it comes off some of the paint is coming off and it doesn't do a full dot or i just had a difficult time with it yeah it's probably just getting you know used to something it's just user error <laughs> it's me not knowing how to use the tools yeah, I get, I get really good. Um, I really like these, um, but I am experimenting. I um, have done some projects recently with the silicone brushes. And I really like those. So I will be showing that soon. Cool. That's exciting because I have no idea what to do with those either. Yeah, <laughs> I like them. I just okay. used the brushes and then all these tools came on the scene and I have no idea what I'm doing. 
Yeah, I um, see for the you, me using the brushes, I really would have to I have to practice that a lot. But that's the thing is, I think you just get used to a tool. Yeah. Like anything else. It was just what I'd been painting with for years. And now I think it's awesome that these tools are all coming on the scene. I just don't know how to use them all. <laughs> now, one thing that I wanted to show you, my dots got a little bit, I don't know if you guys can see it, a little bit faint there. So I'm just going to go over with a smaller size and just give them a little bit more weight. Let's see how that's coming along. I really overload my tools. So even my paintbrush, mm -hmm. so if anything, I have a problem with it um, pulling a longer string. So, but yeah, top dotting is a good, good way to add bulk to your color. Mm -hmm, for sure. All right. So I'm going to go in and again, I'm just following the, the pattern here in the design and every other row, I'm going to put a little center on the trunk just to give that trunk a little bit of weight. And that was the uh, K10.5, 6.5 millimeter. <clears throat> and then I'll just keep moving along. I have to refer to my pattern just to keep those people that bought the pattern, keep going with them. Um, Okay, so now I'm going to move up in size a little bit here, and I'm going to go to the N15 10 millimeter. We have a couple of people just joining us now saying they're late, but they're excited. They can rewatch. They can't wait to make this beauty. Yeah, I think that you'll really enjoy this. Okay, now I've gone to the I-9, 5.5 millimeter, and I'm just going to put a couple of dots down with that size. I'm going slow just because of the strings on the paint. Kathy, she's painting on cardstock. And mine is on an 8 by 10 canvas. All right, I'm moving down to the H8 five millimeter. Again, just graduating those dots. See how you could do this really with any, you know, just really just even a basic triangular shaped tree. <clears throat> I'm going to move down to the um, G6 four millimeter again, just to kind of graduate these dots. And then use my nail daughter to just walk it down the rest of the way.
and I'm going to fill in a little bit of the few of these dots here. Moving to the M13 9mm for the next row. And you can see how we're just sort of staggering those rows. You know, we're going out, in, out, in, just like how the tree sort of shape went. Deborah says she loves how many possibilities there are with this design. Oh, yeah. I think, um, tell, tell us what you think you might do. I think that sounds exciting. I think there are lots of possibilities for sure. And it's simple. Really, it's really repetitive, you know, um, with the with the branches. It's there's a lot of repeating design element here. And then I've gone to my K10.5, and I'm just going to put down a couple. Miranda, how are you enjoying the lives? This is the, these are the first ones you've done. Yes, it is. It's exciting. It's kind of cool to be able to paint with other people and interact way more and and I don't feel so silly like I'm talking just to myself. I can look up and see responses. <laughs> <laughs> but also, it's nice with Maria, you and I being able to bounce ideas off of one another and then interact with everyone and talk about stuff. It's it's nice to be able to bounce back and forth and communicate live like that. I think it's neat. Yeah, I think that's that's the fun of it. I that just was one of the get, comments. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just got to get my technology skills better. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> We have to have our husbands learn how to paint. Maybe that would be. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't do anything on the, online, on the camera, on whatever. I have to have Rob always helping me. Yeah. Well, I always think I have it figured out. But like today, the camera, that really just threw me for a loop. I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and then I'm just glad you today. didn't hear me swear. You, I didn't swear, did I? I don't think so. I didn't hear I it. Did. <laughs> There is a possibility of that on occasion. <laughs> Ooh, somebody said a sage green background would look nice on it. And somebody else is saying, Deborah's saying silver with red balls like her mom's tree in the 70s. Oh, yeah. That would be gorgeous. You know, that's the thing I like about the cardstock is um, there's so many beautiful colors. But it can be challenging. It's got some little challenge to it as well. <laughs> Somebody or Deborah just wrote she didn't hear a thing and then put a little emoji with a zipper mouth. Uh oh. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. I love this. I love this art community. It's so awesome. It is Thank awesome. You. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the design here. And I'm just following this with every other um, branch. I'm putting a center dot to give the tree some heft. There we go. Wow, 34 years in nursing. That's awesome. What's that? They're talking about how a lot of these ladies are nurses or retired nurses. Uh, they're saying they have to give up their RN job if they want to paint. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Wait till you retire? No. I'm on a break from nursing right now with the one-year-old and homeschooling and all that. So I might go back. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just paint. There you go. There you go. 
Well, you guys, I thought I was going to retire this. Actually, I was planning to retire in December. This December. But I changed my mind. It's a hard, it's for me, it's a, it's a tough decision. I've been working for so long. That um, it's not that I don't have a lot to do. Um, but it's just a, you know, big change. My parents both just retired and it is a huge change. They, I think planning what you're going to do with all your free time or realizing that you really have all these things that you wanted to be doing that all of a sudden start taking up your time and, and that just finances, you know, just being able to redo budgeting and mm -hmm. that's all a big change. Yeah. Well, I, grandchildren, yeah. you know, you can spend more time. <laughs> oh, I, I have a ton of projects to do and a ton of things to do. But, you know, you get used to a certain pattern and, you know, your interactions with people you work with. And I absolutely agree. And I think some people just plain would be bored. Be like, what do I do? I, I've been and if you like your job, too, why not stay? You know, mm hmm. I mean, if you were, if it was a job that you weren't really totally enamored by, then I understand wanting to get out sooner, but. Yeah, I'm going to see how it goes over the next several months. I, uh, I may do like part-time or something. We'll see. Ease myself into it. <laughs> yeah. Deborah says free time is an illusion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love my job. I'm going to squeeze in the painting. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going down. Of course, still going down in sizes. Now that I'm getting towards the bottom, I have to make the dots a little bigger. I don't know if you guys have to do this. If you want to make larger dots, you can just push the paint around with the stylus. If you're using the dotting tools. But if you're lucky, yeah. <laughs> to mine the... tend to get a little wonky when I do that. Do you want to show? You want to show everybody how to do that? Sure, if you want. <laughs> Just kind of dip a ton on there. Hold on. You're gonna switch cameras. Yeah. All right. I just figured I'd keep talking. <laughs> well, did it disconnect me? I don't know. I don't see you anymore. Yeah. It disconnected me. I can hear me. Oh, there you are. Okay, there we go. Nice bright yellow. I'll start down a little lower so I can do one of the bigger dots, but I really just get a ton on the dotting tool and start around near the center where you're going to do it and then just push it around into a circle like that so it gets bigger as you go and that might take a little practice too but you know using the brushes that's what I do as well as I just use the brush and paint a circle so doing that with the dotting tool is not a far cry from that but that way too you don't have to you know if you don't have all the sets that have multiple sizes wow I had a string there Woo. um if you don't have all the multiple sizes that that's one way you can get larger dots just be a paint pusher yeah, mine tend to go out of round. I think like we were talking about earlier, it's just a, a practicing with the type of tool situation. It's just something you'll get used to the more you do it. But you have the nice crochet hooks and you have nice larger sizes that you don't have to adapt with. So you, it's easier just to use those probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. I tried earlier, I tried a bunch with those rods and I just, I could not get it to make a nice dot to save my life. Oh, really? I thought, oh, I'll just use these. They're large, you know, well, why not try it? And then I thought, well, I'll try it before I start. No, that was, I'm glad I decided not to use them. Okay. Are you guys seeing me now? Can they see me, Miranda? Oh, let me switch cameras here. No, it's still on mine. Um, the 
it says I'm presenting to everyone. There we go. Okay. So here we are. Miranda's uh, moved quite a bit past us. Um, no, 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 that's, that's okay. Cause I think that's good to see. We all do it. You know, we all dot differently. So I think that's good. I'm just going to keep going. You guys just let me know if you have any questions. <clears throat> I figured I had to hurry it along if I was going to have to fill in more branches too, because mine are smaller and more spread mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Maria, they're asking what you do for a job. I work for the Department of the Interior. Um, that's like all land, you know, land management. So National Park Service is one of our organizations. Um, Bureau of Indian Affairs, Reclamation, all the dams. Um, so I work for them, and I actually work in the uh, Chief Information uh, Officers organization, and I do cybersecurity. So computer security. That is awesome. Yeah. It's a great mission. They have a great mission. Protecting lands, managing lands. My parents have 130 acres of land up in Vermont. Oh, wow. And they actually, I think, worked with the branch through Vermont to keep it protected so it can't be built on any more than their home and their maple sugar shack and uh -huh. it's all protected. And if they prune the land, it's kind of like their retirement job. They get subsidies for keeping the land nice and pruned and the way that, that it's meant to be for nature, I guess. <laughs> that is a fantastic job. Yeah, it's awesome. And then they have yeah. the apple orchard on it and the maple sugaring. So wow. Not a bad, not a bad place to be. Oh no, it sounds heavenly actually. <laughs> well and my mom is a, a canner, so she <laughs> makes apple butter, apple sauce, and my dad does the maple syrup and yeah. Enjoying, enjoying their retirement. Oh, that's, they're not, they don't actually sound retired. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they like to keep busy. Yeah, they're running, um, is it a, what do you, is it, what do you call it for the maple? Is it an orchard? Is it a farm? Is it a? Um. Well, they have or an orchard, so they have apple trees all over the land, but then yeah. they have a sugar shack where my father has all the setup for lines coming from all the maple trees on the land. Uh-huh. It's gravity fed down the mountain into his sap tanks where he boils down the sap to make maple syrup. Mm. We always have this rivalry talking because Ohio is very proud of their maple trees and their maple syrup. So I'm always doing, oh, test taste. We have Vermont maple syrup. And my father's like, no, it's not as good as, you know, <laughs> Ohio and Vermont have a rivalry, I guess. I did not know that Ohio had maple like a maple commodity. I thought all I've ever realized is Vermont. Yep. That's the same with me until I moved here with my husband and they have a whole maple festival. They have maple candy, maple cotton candy, maple wow. stars. And, yep. <laughs> that's amazing. It is. It's pretty cool. Deborah says her son is an environmental conservation major. He'd love that your job is so interesting. Oh, yeah, that's a cool job. Kathy's asking what color I'm using. I'm actually using the same color, but my camera coloring is off. It looks very, very yellow. Even my hands look orange. <laughs> I'm an Oompa Loompa right now. <laughs> How's everybody who's painting along? How is your project coming? How's your tree coming? A spectacular. Wow. Great. Oh, my. Good. 
Oh, Mary's saying maple syrup, I believe, is what she's talking about, is big there in Canada as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess it would be, huh? They do have a lot of maple trees. My parents live right up on the border of Canada, actually, so they're close enough. They probably share moose. Share what? The moose. Oh, the moose. <laughs> The moose and the deer that come to eat all the apples on my parents' land. Okay, I'm going down to the N15 10 millimeter for the next branch that I'm doing. And I've got a few more to go here. Diane is saying anybody who's looking to buy the paint office supply.com actually has four colors and it's free shipping today. Really? I wow. I checked that out too. <laughs> I guess I wouldn't have thought to look there. No, me either. You're going to be happy with the color of this paint. It has such a beautiful glow to it. Miranda, when you're working by yourself, do you usually have music on or what do you? I do. Yeah, I usually have music on. Um, I listen to almost everything except for rap. It yeah. kind of throws off my beat when I'm dotting. <laughs> 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 no, I really just don't enjoy that kind of music. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, usually I have music or I try to put in headphones so I drown out the house noise. Yeah. yeah. How about you? Um, no, I actually usually have the TV on in the background. Um, I don't usually know anything that's happened on, on the program. I'm not like actually paying attention. It's just background noise. Huh, my husband just popped on telling me I can control my color in the app, but I can't figure out how to get into it. Honey, come help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't watch much TV. In fact, my kids, I think, get frustrated if we actually turn on the television because they're not used to having commercials. Oh, yeah. yeah. So homeschooling is quite um, a commitment. Yes, definitely more than I anticipated for two kids. Did you just start doing that recently or? Sorry, he's trying to help me with the color here. His, my husband's mom homeschooled all of their children, and she's amazing. All six kids did really wow. well. In fact, most of them graduated high school early. And then um, I did at first with our youngest, or our oldest rather, and found it very challenging looking for curriculum and, you know, doing it all on my own. But it was... Um, it was nice we found a co-op. There's co-ops out here where a lot of people homeschool. So there are women who have been doing it for about 12 years right now, and they each picked a subject. And so they teach our children on Fridays, and then we bring them home and do all the work at home, all the testing and all the workbook pages. So they have a week's worth of work, and then they go and get another lesson and any help they can. It's kind of like a tutor session, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I find it helpful because it just feels overwhelming trying to pick a curriculum and like do all that myself. So that's what they are helping with. Well, that's nice that there's and also a little variety, right? Yes, absolutely. And I think, too, it gives you kind of a cushion as a mom or parent to have different time with your kids rather than, oh, your mom's your teacher all the time and mm -hmm. you have a different dynamic. <laughs> Yeah. 
So there's a little bit of cushion when they're gone on Fridays all day, you know, they're in class, they have a different, so to speak, quote unquote, teacher, but then they come home. But it gives us a lot more flexibility too, especially with my family living all the way in New England. Um, we can travel a little bit easier. I can't I'm trying to fix the color here, but. Okay, guys, I moved up now to the P16 11.5 millimeter. Deborah's asking if we can repeat the paint brand again. We're using the Deco Art, but it's their new Extreme Sheen 24 karat gold metallic paint. Let's see if I can show it here on the camera. Diane is asking, will the serial marks erase on the cardstock without shredding it? Yes, but let me tell you, you have to use the right kind of eraser. Um, you have to use an art eraser, and I'll show you as soon as I get this paint on here, I'll show you what, um, what I use. And I've tried, um, you know, because like, like, uh, is it Diana? Diana said, um, Diane, yep. yeah, Diane, the, the paper, you know, is not going to hold up to a lot of wear and tear, of course. Um, so I use, I have two, I think erasers on my table here somewhere. Here's one of them, which is just a, it's magic rub, Sanford magic rub. And I'll just do a little edge here. I don't know if you could see that. Do you see how easily that came up? And it's not damaging the paper. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, and then the other one that I use. Yeah, we can see it. Is this fact is this is, I think, um, like what drafters and those type type you. So this is usually in, well, I think this is it like in the art section too, but it's a Factus OV12 made in Spain. And it also is a nice soft eraser that takes, just takes this transfer paper off beautiful, the, the transfer beautifully. So you'll be really happy if you have, um, you know, a good eraser, a good art eraser. Mine, I just etched on, so I will just be wetting the edge after all my paint is dry. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I don't even have to do it because once I varnish it, the wet varnish actually takes the lines away. Mm -hmm. I did yeah. it beforehand, though, so I wouldn't be nervous and poke a hole in my canvas. <laughs> <laughs> Sue just popped in. She said she's just watching. She got here late. Hi, Sue. I must use way more paint. I have already had to refill my well twice now. Yeah, I've refilled once. Oh, you did? Okay. I missed it. Yeah, I don't put a whole lot of paint out on my palette because it goes dry so fast. Um, yes, good. but, um, yeah, I have to refresh periodically.
That's looking really nice, Maria. Thank you. I think um, I'm just so happy with this paint. Did you try varnishing over it yet? No, um, I'm going, because this is cardstock, I'm going to experiment. I, I'm kind of trying out different things. Have you varnished on cardstock before? I have not. No. Has anybody else varnished over cardstock ever? I wonder how it would soak in. Yeah, I'm trying. I've got some uh, pages, some sheets that I sprayed with a with an acrylic sealer that they that is used for just acrylic painting to seal acrylic painting. So I've mm -hmm. sprayed the paper, and um, I'm going to try it. Um, to see how it works. I, I mostly want to be able to, you know, like if I'm on a canvas, I can just wipe off an error, right, with a Q-tip or whatever. Right. But on a cardstock, you can't do that. So I'm trying out some different sprays and sealers to see what I can use to um, protect the paper a little bit. So I'll let everybody know how that goes. I don't usually use sprays because I had a really bad experience where one sprayed chemical white powder all over a canvas that took me forever to paint. And then another one just came out uneven. I just am not, I haven't had good luck with them. So I tend to use the, whatever the brush-ons are, like the liquid Tex or even now Decor has the top coat that I've tried and a couple mm -hmm. of their AeroClear and whatnot, but. Yeah. I don't actually like to use a lot of sprays either. These um, I'm putting on before I paint on them, right? To give a surface to paint on um, as opposed to like varnishing. I tend to use a brush on or a sponge on for a varnish as well. Okay. I don't get good results with spray varnish myself. I know a lot of people do, but I, I don't know. I, I don't have good results with it. I hear Krylon. A lot of people are saying Krylon spray works amazing. And a lot of people now are switching over to resin, which yeah. is a little pricey for me right now. But <laughs> yeah, I just got sent some to try. So I'm mm -hmm. going to be trying it soon. Yeah. The other thing with resin is um, you have to make sure your surface can support the weight of the resin. Right. And it looks like some of the resins, I see people wearing masks and all sorts of stuff. So <laughs> I'm not set up for that yet with the ventilation. And mm -hmm. Christine said she just found decoart.com has a special today for the extreme sheen. They're out of a few colors, but she the ones she actually got to order were a dollar forty or a dollar thirty four each plus shipping. That's good. Is I wonder yeah, what shipping is like because that's a good price. I think I um, some of these bottles are like two ninety nine in the in the uh, craft stores. Oh, Deborah said she once grabbed her spray finish and found out it was white paint. <gasps> oh, oh, no. That would be heartbreaking. Yes, absolutely. Skims555 says they lightly spray their quilled projects with Krylon spray as long as you don't overspray it. It works very well, except for the smell. So qu quilling is when they coil the papers and make shapes out of that. So I wonder if that would be the same for cardstock then. Oh, okay.
Gail says she homeschooled her last daughter. She graduated at 16 years old and she's a chemist at Dow now. Wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. My youngest loves chemistry. She's actually in charge of recycling in our home, so she loves it if we put things in the recycle bin that aren't empty, like wine and milk and juice, because she becomes a chemist out in the yard, dumping them all together <laughs> before they go into the bin. It's kind of gross, but <laughs> at age 11, you know, it gets exciting. <laughs> well, she's got to entertain herself somehow. <laughs> That's exactly what she says. I, I appreciate the whole whistle while you work mentality. Mm -hmm. They're laughing at me. Okay, <laughs> I'm on my last branch. And this one, for this one, we're actually going to kind of, we've been sort of going swooping down into a V. This one, we're going to come from the corners and go up to meet the other branch there. So I'm going to get a little more paint. And I'm using the P16 11.5 millimeter. Mary says she tried Krylon spray and it left, a, I'm sorry, the Krylon spray left a weird spray mark when she used it on canvas, so she only uses it on rocks. Mm. That's another thing, too, depending on what you have painted upon. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, and I'm just continuing to graduate these sizes here. Miranda, I shared the candied bacon with the with uh, my group. Oh, you did awesome. Bacon candy, I guess. They loved seeing that recipe. I ate so much the other night. It, it probably was regrettable that I made so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make it for Christmas. Yeah, I'll make it again then too. It works better. I didn't. I don't think I put on there, but it works better if you use the center cut, the thick cut bacon. I probably should write that on there too. And you see how I'm just kind of swooping up from the bottom now.
It's so pretty, Maria, says Daria. Oh, I'm glad you like this. I actually am kind of a little bit partial to this design, too. Wow, Christine said she checked Amazon for the paint. They wanted over $5 for oh. the two ounce bottle of the gold. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Edith says she's not too much of a fan of this sticky type of paint. <laughs> yeah, you definitely have to go slow um, because it is something. It does now, take a little getting used to. What's that? It does take a little bit of getting used to. Yeah, for sure. Now you can thin it with a little bit of water, but um, you don't want to thin it too much because it's all that mica in there that's making it, you know, giving it that look. All right, I'm going to finish up these branches. Okay, now I'm going to add the trunk, <clears throat> and this is just, um, you know, a size of tool that can make a, a larger center dot. So I think I'm going to use uh, the M13 9mm here, and it's just three little dots to form the trunk. How are you doing, Miranda? You got your your branches? Yeah, I was just waiting to see what we did for the trunk and then, because I forgot in my brain what the pattern looked like. I didn't print it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so this is how our pattern's looking so far. And now I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up and we're gonna do our little top, a uh, little part of the topper here. And then the pattern, <clears throat> has um, a whole bunch of walking the dots around each one of those end branches, the tips, and then some little ornaments. I call them little ornaments, little crowns um, that we'll do. And um, that's also a repetitive pattern. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to do this piece up here. Then I'm going to go to kind of walk with the dots around. And then we're going to do this pretty topper. So to do the... Um, this topper, we're really just following the same, it's just ex exactly the same sort of um, pattern in that we're gonna graduate them up to this point. So it's gonna come up like this. Miranda, cue me if I need to slow down or. Yeah, I'm looking, Mary says you're fast. She's still on the next to last row, but she's the only one commenting on time yet. Okay. Does anybody else need us to slow down or? I think they all must be painting. I'm not getting a response yet. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay, I'm going to, I'll stop after we get to the, finish this topper here. Kristen Selmer says, hi, shout out from your neighbor in Denver. Ooh, hello. Maria, how long do you let the cardstock dry? And doesn't it curl the paper, says Christine. So um, you can see that I've been painting on this and I'm not really getting any kind of curl. I will get some as we start to load it up a little bit more. Now, because we're doing this live, I'm painting um, faster than I normally would. So I would let and I know Miranda, you probably do this too. I have dry steps in my process. I like to let it dry a little bit before I would move on, for example, to add these other little flourishes that we're going to add. But because we're doing it live, I'm not stopping the way I, I might if I were in my, you know, just doing this on my own. Um, I, I tend to let it dry in between major steps. So this I would normally put aside and let it dry and then come back and start painting on it again. Um, and I don't have a, I haven't had a problem with the cardstock. Now I'm using a heavy weight cardstock. So I am looking when I go to buy it, I am looking for the heavier weight. And I don't remember what the actual weight is, but you know, it actually says on there heavy weight. So that's actually, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a little sturdier cardstock. <clears throat> Grateful girl says she's getting here late. Oh my gosh, that's going to be beautiful. Got here late. Going to try that for sure. Yeah, I hope you like the project. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm going to um, I'm going to go ahead and move along on the topper just a little bit because I want to share in this design. I'm going to show you the topper or the uh, this top element here. This is actually the topper, but this piece right here. So what we've done, if you compare the two, you can see where we're at right here in the unfinished piece and then what it looks like here. So the thing about this little element here, this center dot, <clears throat> you need to kind of look at how your spacing is and decide what kind, what size uh, tool you want to use to get that center dot. Um, and so I think is what I usually do is I just kind of audition my tool, keeping in mind that when I put paint on, it's going to spread. So it's this is a little bit smaller diameter than what it will be when I actually load it with paint. So I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say, OK, is that um, a good size for what I have to fit in this space or what I want to fit in that space? I think this might work, but it. It also could be a little bit large. Um, so I might go down just a little bit just to, to make sure that I can get the different elements that I want to get in there. So I'm going to actually turn this upside down to make it easier to work on for me. Get some paint on there. And I'm going to go right in the middle. And then I've got a north, south, east, west.
And then I'm going to go down to, um, in size on my nail dotter, and I'm just going to add a couple of little dots in between. So I'm getting a little bit of a, of a um, diamond shape. You're getting any bubbles in your paint? Yes. Your I'm okay. glad you mentioned it. Yes. Um, I have some. I don't have a lot, but I do have some. And that's a good point, Miranda, because I um, I meant when I saw them, I meant to mention it too. Be sure you get those popped because you don't want a hole in your paint. So if you see them, just kind of glance around and see if you see any that you can pop while the paint's still nice and wet. Is that what you do or do you do something different with the bubbles, Miranda? Uh, with the brushes, I generally don't get bubbles that often, but yeah, I'm noticing it with this, with the dotting yeah. tools, definitely mm -hmm. there's a lot of bubbles. So I'm just going through with a sharper, smaller tool and popping them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I do too. I'm glad you, I'm glad you noticed that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is <clears throat> we're still working on the structure of our tree. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to do this top dotting and I'll, I'm going to go. I'm not going to go super fast, but I'm going to go fairly slow to start. And then I might speed up a little bit because this is pretty basic around each one of the branches, the end of the branches, we walk the dots around and then we'll come back in. I do that first. Just, this is just my, my way of doing it. Um, you, you work with, you know, the, how it works best for you, but I like to kind of stick with a similar tool and, you know, process. So I'm going to go around, walk the dots here, and then I'm going to come back and do the crowns, the little crown elements. And I will start with not my largest nail dotter, but um, sort of a mid one here to walk dots around. And the way I'm orienting my dots, I'm kind of thinking of this as the tree, right? So I'm following this line to get my first dot. Did that make sense, Miranda, what I just showed? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think once you do it, they'll see. So it's a little bit kind of tilted. It's not necessarily straight, you know. And then you get and kind I of always, the whimsical point of limb. Go ahead. That way, too, it's more like an evergreen mentality that you're getting the little needles off the end type idea. Yep, exactly. Now, these that are in the center or in, in between branches, I might only be able to get a few dots around. And one technique that I use when I'm dotting, I dot my center and then I go around one side, come back and re-dot the center just to transfer paint and then go around. And I'm doing that um, so I can get consistent sized dots on either side. I never thought to do that. That's actually a good trick. Sometimes I'll just drop a little bit of paint off somewhere else on the canvas or on yep. the palette. Mm -hmm. I have too much, but that's a good idea. Yeah, I do. I drop it sometimes off on my palette, depending on what I'm doing. But this way I get that initial transfer. See, this is really starting to come together now when we're starting to add these additional elements. Yeah, it really starts to fill in nicely. Yep. I have to I have a confession. I hope you all have been able to hear me okay. I realized I'm talking into my camera as opposed to the microphone that my husband set up for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not laughing at you, Miranda. I didn't get my camera working till I don't know how far into the thing here. So 
I'm laughing at me, but I just realized I was doing it again, going, what am I, I'm just not even the microphone. What am I doing? <laughs> oh my gosh. Told you, sometimes maybe I'm not so good at the walking and chewing gum type mentality. <laughs> Too many things at once. Hmm. They're asking for the bacon recipe again. Do you mind if we list it on this one too? I can send. You. We can just put it. In oh the yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> We've got to have our bacon. Our can. What is it? Is it candy bacon? Candy bacon, bacon candy, spicy bacon, whatever you want to call it. Spicy bacon twists. Whatever it is, it sounds delicious. It really is yummy. It's definitely a winner too. I think my husband brought it into work and the next day you can just put it in a toaster oven to reheat mm -hmm. it. Cause I, it's so good right out of the oven, <laughs> which is when most of it gets eaten here. But I can't believe there would be any left over the next day. No, I, I'll have to say that our, the places we brought it to were very lucky it made it there this year. I try to only keep it we, like we make it Thanksgiving and Christmas so that we go most of the year without it so that mm -hmm. we don't overdo it. <laughs> yeah. But. This is where I start sweating, says Deborah. And the little dots, she said the perfect project, then walk a dot and ruin it. Oh. oh, well, if you take your time on it, too, I already I already blended two together up here, but I don't know if you're painting on cardstock or what you're painting on, but sometimes with the background, you can fix it, too. Yeah, see, I think it's it really makes a difference to add those dots. All about building up the design. Yeah, that looks great, Maria. Did you just use the dotting tool? You are okay. What's that? I was asking if you were using the nail dotting tools to do that, but. Yeah. I'm having trouble with the strings. I can't go very quickly. Yeah, I am using it and I, um, the, the, the strings definitely slow, slow you down. It's just a minor adjustment though. It's worth it for this really pretty paint. Mm -hmm. Even just looking at it in the palette, it's so shiny. It looks like jewelry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, liquid gold, huh? Yes, exactly. Miranda, do you travel at the holidays since your family's east, or how do you? Uh, we used to. Uh, over the past few years, though, we've been trying to readjust our schedule to go in the off-season instead. Um, we have spent years where we spent more time sitting in traffic on the interstate or accidents or stuck in the snow. So we decided to kind of readjust so we go out in the summer for two weeks and then try to do like a spring break mm -hmm. too. But it does make it a little difficult, although you said you come from a military background a little bit, so you understand <laughs> having to move around and visit and mm -hmm. changing up schedules and... When we were in the military, it was a lot more difficult <laughs> just to, because we were in North Carolina and we were in California and it's, it's a long. 
is this <laughs> is this you and your husband or when you were growing up? Yes, my husband and I mm. when we were in the military. I didn't realize you guys were in the military. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. He that's actually where we met. He is a Marine and I was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And we met in Monterey, California. Wow. It was gorgeous. I never wanted to leave. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet it was. Plus, I'm obsessed with the ocean, so. I am, water too. In general. Yep. <laughs> How's everybody in the chat doing? I was just checking that. It looks like somebody's, somebody said, Maria, can I see your silver tree? Did you do one in silver? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I did a, just another. Now this one I did in silver. This is just a uh, shimmering silver metallic, but I put that glitter that, gloss enamel glitter i don't know if you guys can see it glittery oh that is gorgeous isn't that pretty i love now, I that i have to go back on my cardstock and sort of you know like you can see i got some little bloopies but a little bit of black paint will kind of cover that but isn't that pretty that is beautiful i really like that yeah i like the gold too now i can't decide i have to do another one <laughs> yeah i actually want to do one more with just a bunch of bright colors Lots of, ooh, that's pretty. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, that's so pretty. <laughs> We're all in agreement. Yeah, I think somebody was saying earlier, the design's a little bit versatile, right? You could try lots of different color combos. Yes, exactly. Love the silver, beautiful Maria, very pretty. Well, it looks like we have some others with lots of military experience as well. Mm. Deborah says she's an hour from Yosemite, so about four from Monterey. Pam said, thanks for showing the silver tree. Did you dot the glitter on top? No, I, I use the... And I... I actually like the way it looks, but I don't know if you, you guys can't really see the sparkle because um, it's got like a transparent background. So the, these little dots here are the glitter. And no, in the when we dot in between, you'll see that when we put on this one, we're going to dot in between the branches. And I just filled it in with the glitter. The gloss enamel glitter is white. And then also then with some little silver dots. And I think that's just stunning. I think it's beautiful. <clears throat> okay. So now we've, I have gone on and I know I might be going a little fast for everybody. So you guys are going to maybe catch up and I'll, I'll stop in a minute here, but I want to show you a couple of variations that we're going to do on the edges here so that you can, um, you can get a sense of this and we might not be able to get it all of it done. But um, what I'm going to do is, let me look at the piece here. <clears throat> do you see that some of these have small dots and then some of them have larger dots there? Um, and I just alternated, again, going, as Miranda said, for that kind of pine look where the, the branches are spiky. So we'll just add a couple of little dots here and then alternate on the extended branches with these larger ones. And I'll show that um, now, and then we can move on with um, with those, p those elements. So for this top one, I'm just gonna actually do a little bit like that. And 
And then on this inner one, it's just three dots. Little um, triangle there, and then we'll move it out one more. Can you guys see that? Three dots, and then one on top. For the extended branches, I actually use the, G, um, the G6 four millimeter, and it's the same pattern. And then we'll just add a little dot like that. <clears throat> so let me make sure everybody can see that OK. It was blurry for a minute, but now it just cleared up. OK. And so then we'll alternate. We'll use a nail dotter to do three small dots and then one. And then we'll use the G6, the larger one, to do three on each of the extended branches. Have you considered scanning these beautiful trees and selling them as digital papers on Etsy? Ask Luxury Card Store. Somebody actually in one of the groups mentioned um, something like that, like doing cards and stuff. I actually think that I may move out into digital prints and things, but um, I haven't explored that yet i haven't gotten there now miranda are you doing any prints i am not now um when i used to have my etsy shop i was doing prints of my photography mm -hmm. and i took a, like pictures of pieces that i have done and then digitally people would buy them digitally to print um but i have not since the pattern this is the first time now with this different shop as far as digital uploads and there seems to be a problem with my account for it right now that I'm trying to work out. I don't know if you have a problem with PayPal, if people pay with PayPal, it's holding it for like 24 hours, their payment before they allow a digital download. Oh no, I haven't heard of any issues. So that was the problem apparently that happened before. And I apologize to anybody that was late getting a pattern for our last dot along, but that's what happened is they're telling me that for some reason they don't think it's allowed <laughs> in their system. And then, so the system puts a hold on it until they manually go through and allow all the payments. But Miranda, I thought Etsy was doing the digital download. They are, and Etsy keeps telling me that it's not a problem on their end, and PayPal, the first four times I called, said it wasn't PayPal's problem, it was Etsy not accepting the payment, so I keep getting back and forth, back and forth, but then I got to a pretty high-ranking person at PayPal who sent me to their um, compliance management group. Yeah. And I'm waiting to hear back officially, but their theory is that the computer system thinks that it's something that PayPal is not allowing to be covered by the seller protection through Etsy. Oh. So there's some legalistic issue. And I don't know why it's only happening on my shop because other people don't have a problem <laughs> with 
people paying with PayPal doing digital downloads, but they said that this is the first they've heard of it. So they're looking into it and they're going to get back to me. Well, that's a bummer. I, uh, I, I guess I'm going to have to go look and see, cause I didn't really notice what method people were using, you know, but I haven't heard of anybody not being able to get their downloads. So. Yeah, I don't think I would have known otherwise other than the last time because people weren't able to get them in time for our dot along. And when I researched into it, it was all people that had paid with PayPal. Uh, huh. Um, Deborah says prints would be lovely and probably profitable for you, but your original art is so special. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've thought about it and I may at some point do that. Um, I would like to, I'm going to, I don't know, I'm experimenting with all kinds of things. Is everybody able to follow around, follow okay this last step on adding to the branches? Anyone struggling with that or want to slow down? Beverly says the focus is going in and out. Is anybody else having any problems? Gail says yes. Really? Because I don't, I can't see that the focus is going in and out. I wonder. Yours looks fine to me now. It was initially going in and out, but now that we've stopped picking the cardstock up and stuff, I think it's settled on a focus point. Huh. Well, as you know, I struggle with getting my setup because I don't know that those, hey, hey, those people that have been doing the Don Longs, have you noticed a focus problem before? And maybe I just didn't notice it. Diane says, yes, losing focus from time to time, but I don't know if she means our initial conversation with this. Mm. <clears throat> I'm going to have to work on that. Edith, yes, you can still get the pattern for this tree um, at, what, what is your Etsy Sweet Willow Designs? Yeah. And she'll have the link probably right here in her dot along event listed below. You can just click on the Etsy link for Sweet Willow Designs. Yeah, when we, when I finish, when the video processes, I'll add um, some details for Miranda's store and mine too. So you guys can pick up the patterns if you like. <clears throat> that really says she's never had problems with your last videos with the dot with the live dot alongs on the focus or the focus yep yeah i didn't think so either so maybe it's just because i had a glitch going in here with my camera Um, maybe there's a setting I need to go take care of.
Excuse me. Oh, bless you. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to refresh Carol my Simmons says, oops, Sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Carol Simmons is saying PayPal must be holding up her purchase right now. And when she purchased oh, one, it. Nine, it held up for a day. Mm. Well, that's a bummer. It is because you expect a digital to be immediate. Yeah, exactly. oh, okay, I get <laughs> oh, I just glooped everywhere. Ah. You what? I just glooped it. <laughs> oh, no. That's all right. Nothing a little black paint can't help. Okay, I finished adding <clears throat> those elements, but I'm going to take a pause here for just a minute and let you look at this and then see how you all are progressing. Maybe you can, in the chat, say how you're moving along, if you're keeping up, or do I need to slow down? says it's going in and out of focus again brother it's so weird because i don't see it going in and out of focus i think somebody said it might be youtube she's had it happen with a couple other channels recently and i think the same i agree because when i'm looking at yours on the google i can see it clearly but on youtube it is blurry oh so uh, yeah because i don't see it changing at all i'm i'm actually watching the <clears throat> I'm actually watching the broadcast. Okay. And it's not I don't right now. No, I don't I don't actually see it going in and out of focus now. I'm my eyes are not on it all the time, of course. So I might maybe I'm just missing it. That's a shame. I'm gonna have to look at the replay and see how much out of focus there is. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Okay, so I think we're ready to move on to the um, to finish up and add our topper. So I'm going to do that. <clears throat> and I want to show it to you first. So here's what it looks like. And you can see we go up, we have a center dot, and then we have six main spokes and then some little intermediate, you know, inner, um, some of these little minor spokes in between. So the way to get a nice placement on this is not to start with this dot, right? Not to start with that center dot, but to work your way up. So I'll start kind of here and then I'll move my way up to put this dot and then I'll be able to put the rest of them around a little bit more easily. So let me show you that. I'm going to actually flip it around so it's a little easier for me to work on. I'm using the largest uh, nail dotter, and I'm going to put that dot right there. Mm 
I'm going to use the H8 5 millimeter. And this may be slightly different from the pattern. I'm trying to decide what I what I did on the pattern. But so see how I'm, I'm moving up, and then I can get this dot more perfectly uh, placed there. And for the center dot, I'm going to use the M13 uh, 9 millimeter to make a nice big center dot. That actually wasn't a very nice dot. Let me go over it. And that's better. And now what I can do <clears throat> is I can keep moving. I'll do this top one here. Okay, now this is where I'm going to stop and I'm going to get my chalk pencil. And I'm going to draw the lines for the other spokes because um, otherwise I'll, I might get a little wonky here. So I'm going to, I might get wonky anyway, but I have a better chance of having some symmetry if I draw some lines for myself. Okay, so I've just put some little marks for myself to give a little orientation. And now I can go in and dot those.
And I'll put one more little smaller dot at the end of each one of those to just extend it a little bit further. Okay, now in between, I'm going to put some smaller sp spikes here. And I'm just going to use a small, one of the smaller nail dotters. And I'm just going to I'm going to just walk these, I think. And I'm walking out five. Now, for me, it's five. Of course, it might be a little different for you. But I'm just going to walk out five. small dots. It might be hard to see on camera because these are really small. Yeah, they are saying that. They're asking for a close-up at the end when you're done. Yeah, I'll go back and show you all. Okay, I'm going to stop there to show this to you. Can you see that? So I've got my main spokes, and then in between, I've just walked out five dots, five little teeny dots. Can you guys say if you can see that okay? They're saying yes. Okay, I can good. See it. Good. And then at the end of that, I'm going to put a little detail on the end. And I'm going to just do with the largest nail dotter that I have that little three dot. that little three dot detail. And I'll go back in and add one small dot on top of that just to finish it. And then I'll just go back and add a small little dot at the end of each one of those just to finish it. And let me show you what that looks like. <clears throat> and that's the topper. Now, if you wanted to, you could make this topper a little bit bigger just by changing the size of like these dots in on each one of these spokes. You could extend the spokes a little bit if you wanted to and make the dots a little bit bigger. But I think that's... That's really pretty. Can you guys see how that's coming along?
now I let's hey Miranda, can we look at yours? See how yours is coming? Sure. I had to skim off the top a minute because I my spacing is off. <laughs> so I just painted it over black and restarted it here. But I get thrown off if I don't start the mandala mentality with a center dot. Oh. So starting from the bottom tripped me up a little, but that's okay. I just painted it over black and then did my center dot. And plus okay. the sizing is different because I have different tools. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. You know, that's interesting. I um, I get what you're saying about the center dot. The issue I have always is with spacing. And so um, I always talk about a reference dot. And that's kind of what I do when I start here and kind of move up to the center just to help me with my, it helps me personally with my spacing a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna take a sip and then we're gonna play. Now we can play with some color. So we've got our basic structure. And now we're going to finish it up by adding these colors. And I used two colors as sort of the ornaments to sort of fill in here. I used a metallic a color called berry. And then the other is called teal. So these are just the deco art um, dazzling metallics in teal and berry. And of course, you could use any colors that you like. And I'm just using the metallic um, just for the sheen. But, um, you know, if you're going to um, put a varnish or something like that to give it the shine at the end, I think that would be really pretty. And then you could use any colors that you wanted to use. So I'm going to go ahead and get my paint out. How's everybody doing? Are you guys keeping up okay? Gold on black looks very regal, says Beverly. Yeah. They're Beautiful. loving your three dot clusters. Yeah. I call those crowns. Those are the little crowns. Okay. So I've got my paint out on my palette. <clears throat> and this is where we're just random, actually. I'm going to start with the largest tool. And for me, I'm going to, um, well, I might use a little like the uh, H8 five millimeter, but you can sort of choose whatever sizes you like. And I tend to put the, the largest dots down first and then fill in with the smaller ones. So now this is just random placement. God, that's such a luscious color. And then we just play and put wherever our hearts desire. And we're going to kind of fill this in quite a lot. See how it's really bringing it to life with the color. I'm going to bring that up so you guys can see that a little better. See how it's really coming to life now with that color? The little simple thrills, huh? Deborah's asking if you find that the metallics separate 
Actually, I'm noticing with this that I'm, I generally, I have not noticed that. However, I'm looking at this paint that I just took out of this bottle. And I think it is a little bit separated. As I have had that happen with some of them, especially if you use like the champagne, um, mm -hmm. some of the other lighter colors where it's like an oil or something. It looks like. Yeah, it's like the mediums have separated. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> I haven't noticed it until this time around. This is a brand new bottle of paint. And I'm wondering if maybe I didn't shake it enough, but I haven't noticed it in the past. Beverly, do you, I mean, do you, <clears throat> do you see that happen a lot? And is it with the metallics, I wonder? I noticed with the crafters acrylics from mm -hmm. deco art that I had, um, maybe I, like I was saying before, a lot of the colors are retired. <laughs> so they were separated when I bought them at the mom and pop craft shop around here. But well, if you shake them, they still work pretty well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as I, as I move up the tree, I'm just going to go down to smaller tools to fit in the space. Okay, I've put quite a bit of berry down. And I'm now going to go in and do the same thing with the larger tool with the teal. Just to get those large um, dots in. See how that's coming along? Isn't that pretty?
Beverly says she just ordered an 18 bottle pack of the metallics. Ooh. I didn't even know they had that big. <laughs> wow. You're going to be... You're going to be excited when you get those. Yeah, she said she's dying to start using them. They're gorgeous. They're beautiful. Yeah. These are really beautiful paints. I didn't even know they made that many metallics. I didn't either. I don't have the teal. I'm using the peacock pearl. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I'm now that I've got sort of my main big dots down, I'm just going to start filling it in as much as I want. Now, I'm going to use my nail dotters to fill in, and then also I'm going to fill in with a little teeny bit of gold also just to kind of pull that color through. And just like when we walk the dots, we can um, put down more than one dot with, you know, each load of paint and they'll get progressively smaller. Good night, Donna. Donna's leaving. She said her battery's too low. Uh-oh. <laughs> Bye, Donna. We've been on here a long time, actually. I was just noticing. Is it really 8.30? 10.30, my time. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> We're almost done. Oh, it's fine. We're doing great. I think this is the longest one we've had. <laughs> I did worry well, about this project, you know. I thought it might be too long for for a live. We'll have to see what the group thinks. <clears throat> I think it's good to see intricate things being done while we're talking about it, too, that they can ask questions rather mm -hmm. than, I mean, you can always watch the replay, too, but I think it's helpful to be able to ask questions. And with this step, you can fill in as much as you like or leave it more open. It's kind of up to you how much color you want to add and when you think it's good to stop. Daria says, you guys are doing great. It's great spending so much time with you all. Hmm. Jeannie says, I'm loving this. Such a great time. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. I enjoy these. I think um, I was nervous to do lives, you know, Miranda. Um, but it's really nice to have the group to interact with. I agree. It was pretty nerve wracking at first. I have sweaty palm the first night. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have sweaty palms every time we start, but I still like it. 
Yeah, it's exciting. I, I, it's more excitement, I guess, than nerves, I guess I want to say, but it is so much fun. Christine says, yes, this is fun. Beverly says, like I said, I'm retired. I don't have to set an alarm. <laughs> <laughs> she can stay up till midnight. <laughs> Go wild and crazy and stay up till midnight. One of the gals left the last time from at 2 a.m. at the last video. Oh, my heavens. <laughs> They're laughing at me saying I had sweaty palms. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, I just got to say it. Say it like it is. There's no sugar coating here. <laughs> how's everybody liking applying the color isn't this fun this is a fun step i like seeing the berry and the teal together it's really pretty isn't that gorgeous i just love it and that teal is really popping off the page isn't it yeah and yours definitely i can see it they're a good contrast for each other all right, I'm going to go in with a little bit of gold and then just see what I think. Just slower, a little slower with the gold just because of the sticky. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Sheila says she feels privileged to be able to talk with two of the greatest artists. And then Sheila, or I'm sorry, Deborah says she's agreeing with her. You guys are super sweet. Oh, that is nice. Thank you. Elizabeth Lindbergh says she came in a little bit late, but this is wonderful. And it's not too long since the time goes by really fast. Thank you for another wonderful project, Marie and Miranda. Oh, good. I'm glad that you guys enjoyed this. I knew that this, these, uh, Miranda, it would be so fun um, to be able to paint with you. So thank you for that. I'm really glad you suggested it. It is super fun. 
you get caught up in the, your own day to day. You don't think outside the box sometimes. I'm really glad that you came up with this idea for us to do. Maria, where have you been hiding? They're asking. Deborah says, Maria, where have you been hiding? I'm officially in love. <laughs> have I been hiding? <laughs> oh, gosh. I think it's hard because there's so many social media platforms with Instagram and YouTube oh, yeah. and Facebook and oh, who knows, all these ones. Patreon now. and it's, Yeah. yeah. It's I hard actually, if you're only on one. What's that, Miranda? It's hard if people are only on one. You know, they may not necessarily catch everything. Yeah, I actually am slow to adopt, to be honest with you. Like Instagram, I've only just started posting and I'm not very consistent to tell you the truth. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to keep up with. Okay. I'm coming to the point where I'm going to step back here and see if I feel like I have enough. Yeah. See, I'm kind of liking the way that looks uh, with the amount there. Um, I might give it a little bit of time to sort of step back and look at it a little bit more <clears throat> at some point and say, do I want to add anything else? There's a couple of more elements I'd like to add right here in the topper in this blank space. I'm going to add a little bit of, um, of the um, color. And um, I'm just going to kind of go around the sort of shape here. This might be a little bit harder to see, so I'll show it in a minute. I'm just kind of following the outline and just pulling a little bit of the color into this top, into this top here of the tree. And just kind of following the shape of the branch. And that'll give it a nice little finishing and it'll fill in some of the space there. You know, let me pull that up so you can see that a little bit. That might be hard to see. Can you see that it's got a little bit of that um, that berry? And now I'm going to go in and just add a little few drops of teal just to pull it together to the uh, to the rest of the piece here. Beverly says, "Wow, that is so beautiful." Oh, thank you. I I just I think this. Um, this one I'm kind of, I, I like too. I think it turned out nicely. So I just added a couple little drops of teal to sort of pull that together. And then I'm noticing something and I noticed I was looking at my pattern. I think the tree uh, stump is not balanced enough. So I'm going to add just a little bit more here, a couple more dots. Just to <laughs> balance just it a little bit. Thing. What's that? I just did the same on mine because I feel like my design got pushed too far up on the canvas. And mm -hmm. there was a lot of blank space on the bottom. Yeah, I just need to balance this a little bit. And that will make me feel better. Okay. See, I think that looks a little better. What do you guys think? See, it feels, feels a little bit more like it's got a little bit more weight there. Okay, the last step is to top dot. Now I used, I'm gonna bring out the other piece here. I used a green and this is actually a metallic. This is um, festive green metallic. And I'll have to confess that 
I don't actually know where my festive green metallic is right now for some reason. Uh, so I'm going to use a regular festive green um, and just to show you, and then I will top dot every single one except the little nail dot or small ones in here in, in the center part of the tree. I won't top dot those, but the larger dots I will top dot with green. I didn't put anything on the outside, but you could certainly decide if you wanted to put anything there. And then for the topper to make it more complete, I just top dotted with the berry and the teal um, to give a, a little bit at draw some of that color up to the top. And once we have finished the top dotting, that actually completes the project. So let me see what kind of green I can find here. So I have some festive green in the regular deco art. So I'm going to try that. I'm only going to do a few though, because um, I'm not sure how it's going to look. So let's see, because I've used metallic everywhere else. I'm not sure I'm going to like that, but we'll give it a try and see what we think. So I'm just going to choose one. And of course, with the top dotting, we're just choosing a tool that's smaller than the, you know. Deborah says, oh no, top dotting. This is another time to sweat. Yeah. So I put the fest, I've just put one little bit of the regular festive green. And I think I can finish it like that. Um, <clears throat> just so you get a sense of it. Um, and then, of course, for top dotting, you know, we're just choosing a tool that's smaller in size and right in the middle. And see how that just, I think that adds just one more really special element. To finish out your look. And of course, you stop wherever you feel comfortable, wherever you, it makes you happy. And you say, oh, I like that then that's when you stop. And I sometimes walk away from the piece, Miranda. I don't know what you do. I walk away sometimes and say, oh, I got to think on it a minute and look at it a little bit and see if it, if I feel like it needs anything more. But see, I think that adds one more just pretty element to the piece. Yeah, I do that a lot. I have to walk away, especially when you're when you're up close with something for a while, it starts to feel like maybe you see every little flaw or it looks crooked or you start counting dots. Sometimes I walk away. Sometimes I walk away for days at a time mm -hmm. <laughs> and go back to it later. But yeah, I do. I have walked away before. Even just get up, go get a drink and go to the restroom or something. And Yeah. Just step back from it. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I got restroom on the mind. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I drank too much coffee maybe before this round. And then um, I'll just keep moving along with different size tools. I don't think I'll do all the top dotting tonight. Uh, I just want to give you a sense of how it changes the look of the piece because we could have stopped several places along this path here and said, that's enough. But that's the artistic expression piece. You're loving the green. Yeah, so. I I like it too. I think it really adds a nice little pop. Deborah says she's flabbergasted. It's so lovely. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad says, you guys oh, like. What's that? Very far away. She says I walk away very far away. 
<laughs> Funny. Gil's asking if we can play again sometime. Yes, I was just um, thinking <laughs> what, we're, uh, what, what to do next. I have some other lives that I've been doing them um, fairly regularly with our group, with our little, uh, the Facebook group that I have. And um, I've, I think we've been doing at least one a month. Um, so I actually have at least one more project in mind for the holidays that I would like to do. So we'll have to stay tuned. Okay, everybody I think should be getting a sense of how that green changes the look as well. And so since I started, I would finish top dotting, you know, each of the branches. I, as you see, I'm not going all the way into the center. You can, if you like, I'm not going all the way into the center. I'm just um, kind of uh, staying on the main, the larger dots. And then of course I will do these dots that are here in the, that we put in the trunk and just show you what that's going to look like. Um, that's a little too big. <clears throat> And see how that starts to pull your eye up a little bit too. And then for the topper, oops, in this little center here, I'll add, get my tool cleaned up. Uh, I'll add a little touch of green here. And then for the topper, I'm just going to um, add the berry and the teal to bring that all together. See, already, can you see how that is just really going to make that topper pop? Add a little bit of the teal to balance it. Now this might be a little hard to see, but I am going to put a little bit of berry on these little little crowns that we put here. And it's hard to see, so I'll bring it up in just a minute. And that will help us. Add a little more color there.
Oops. All of a sudden, I decided I wanted to do a teal instead of a. Okay, I'm going to just bring that up so you guys can see that a little bit. And that really enhances, I think, that adding a little pop of color up there really enhances the look. That looks really nice. Thank you. So I would continue on with the green if you liked adding the green top dots. I think that's a really pretty look. And then just, you know, fill in, decide if you want to add, if you feel like you need to add anything more to kind of fill the tree in. And then basically that's ready. The only other thing I would do is um, that I'm thinking of doing with mine is I am going to mat, this is cardstock. I'm going to mat it on a gold. I'm going to find, uh, I've, I have actually already found some um, scrapbook uh, metallic cardstock that will match this, um, this gold. And I'm going to cut like a you know quarter inch around and mat it on gold. And I'll show that at some point when I finish that mat it on gold and it'll give it a little bit of weight and then you can use it either you know to stand up on a table or um, you could put it in a frame um, something like that but it'll give it a nice little accent around and then you can decide do you want to add corners is there anything you want to do to the corners um, i left mine plain just because there was a lot going on but i think actually putting some little something in the corners might be kind of nice uh, you can think about what you want to do there. So that's basically the project, you guys. Miranda, can we take a peek at yours? Sure. I think I might need to add presents under my tree. Yeah. I really got see? Thing up a little higher. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's beautiful. I just love it. That is so good. My camera's a little close. Mm -hmm. That is so pretty. What's the green that you're using? I have the crystal metallic, the crystal green. green. Yeah. That is really, really pretty. Thank you. They both came out great. I, I yeah. can't wait to see the ones that everybody posts in the groups on Facebook. I've been oh. seeing a lot of the first one we did. They're awesome. Yeah. I would totally love to see how, um, how they turned out, you guys, when you do this project. Um, this is a really fun project. Um, Miranda, should we go up and say goodbye to everybody? Sure. Okay. Let me see if I could get my camera situated. Everyone's still here. No. Yay. We're still awake. Oops. I'm going to lose my, my mount here. I'm going to have to hold it. Okay. Hey, thanks, Miranda, for joining. This was so much fun. And I think that what we want to share with the group is um, how you can take a similar design and transform it just based on your own artistry and uh, your own skill and what you, what you prefer, what you like in terms of art. Yeah, and it's so much fun to just explore what you can do. Obviously, I mean, some people have done four or five times the last design we did on yeah. Santorini stones, on canvas, on yeah. cardstock. So awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. I think that's so great. And we are going to love to see your pictures. So anyone who is able to paint along tonight or if you're going to do the project later, we would love to see your pictures. It's so gratifying to see what you came up with and how actually how you even changed it up, right? And came up with something even even better and even more elaborate or more personal. So we really like to see that a lot. So I wanna thank Miranda for doing the collaboration. It was so much fun, Miranda. I've admired your art for so long um, that I really am glad me. we got to be able to do this. Me too, thanks so much for having me. Yes, thanks everybody. Good night. Bye-bye.